there's nothing wrong with it, right? And the health services programs deliver health care and they burn money. And there's nothing wrong with that. And in both cases, 50 to 70 percentage and sometimes going up to 90 percentage of money is actually spent on staffing and technology, right? What we have really done here is to bring health and financial services together at an outreach level as well as at an organizational level. And how have we gone about doing it is essentially looking at uh, you know, the outreach worker who is delivering the health services to also deliver financial services. And the kind of services is financial literacy, planning, savings, credit, insurance, and pension, which are all leveraged for the community. And we also give them marketing and technology support which uh, to deliver these services. On the health side, till now we've been delivering only the HIV services. What we have done is to move it to more primary health care services, which includes uh, NCD services also, TB malaria, of course, and any proximal infections which are there, like uh, you know cervical cancer. Now, we give top priority to the sex workers who are part of our program, but we have slowly started including other marginalized women in the area because it is becoming quite difficult uh, to identify or people don't identify themselves. It's not an identity which is empowering. But at the same time, many women who are at the same level of income tend to join these groups quite easily. Now, how does this work? It's quite simple. You join one of your local groups, which is formed by women in terms of an affinity group, and you save 50 rupees, which is less than a dollar a, a, a week. And eventually what happens is that you get around eight to 10 things which are completely free treatment, insurance, health mutuals, access to citizenry services, access to violence redressal services, and many other services which they wouldn't be getting earlier. And it's all packaged together and delivered by one person that they really, really trust, which is a community leader who has been very carefully handpicked, and we also ensure that person is a micro-entrepreneur, not somebody who is just delivering health services. Now this, uh, in terms of proof of concept, we've been, uh, I would say, messing around with it for the last decade or so. And I think from a HIV program, we have slowly moved towards a bank. And we now feel very confident that we have the proof of concept. It's working with 13,000 women. I can, at some point, show you videos of women speaking rather than me as a man standing here and speaking. 13,000 women who are making a profit of 0.5 million over the last 10 years. They've dispersed 3.5 million USD worth of loans. And uh, they've made extraordinary uh, really extraordinary results and I, I would love to share it with all of you in terms of what they have managed to do in the healthcare side too. So uh, what our ambition is really to scale it up to 122,000 women in the next four years and to a million women in the next seven years. The targets look small, I, we know we will beat these targets but our entire focus here has been to ensure that we are customer focused and we are relevant to the customer constantly and that's not an easy thing for a not-for-profit to pivot from being a health service delivery partner to a private sector oriented, very, very driven partnership. And how we managed to do it is with a very interesting partnership with Social Venture Partners. And this is a group of people from Seattle, many of you may know. They're providing us mentoring support, uh, which is of extraordinary quality, uh, which has helped us bring private sector management practices into our work. And that's really helped us reach the targets that we've, uh, we've been able to hit. And our, uh, you know, ask to all of you is that we need uh, bankers and people who work in banking trade to mentor us better because we do believe we do not want to have our discovery costs very high. And mm -hmm. I believe that today's banking is not brick and mortar. There's a lot you can do using technology. And secondly, we, uh, we need 10 million in terms of scale-up capital to go to the 122,000 and a million women. But the money is less important. For us, what we believe is that we have a unique model which can be completely self-funded and not can cannot can on, not only address HIV but also many other proximal infections and actually can move towards a full package of primary healthcare services. And uh, we're really excited about it. We're going to go ahead whether we have the funding or not because we will move slowly towards it if we don't have funding. But if we have funding, we can really scale this up and take it to many other places. And uh, I, I completely echo what the panel was saying. Uh, today's world is not just about technology and apps. It's about making the ecosystem work which for the consumer and the customer. Uh, let's not use the word beneficiary. We don't use it, I know. But uh, you know, the power of this community to make a change is huge. And for us, we have to pivot our thoughts to see how are we going to leverage that community and their own abilities and their micro-entrepreneurship to make it a success. What I'm talking about may not sound very innovative to some of you who've been to Bangladesh, which already has models like this. What is really different here is that we are front-ending the financial services, but not losing anything on the, uh, on the health services. And the package, 
at the health services level is not uh, like knowledge giving. It's you know active screening, ensuring ten high burden conditions like anemia, uh, you know blood sugar, uh, you know uh, screening for thyroid, which is a big issue in India among women. Ensuring that you actively screen and put people onto treatment and ensure that they're treated. That's that's the whole point of closing the loop, which we are very very effectively doing. We have great partnerships with private sector. Levi's and Marks and Spencer are a big supporters of us. They're the ones who gave us the initial seed capital to go do whatever we wanted. And in addition, we have a great deal of other partnerships which are coming into play, particularly on the product side. And one of the things I wanted to ask the panel, I know it's a question, but I will leave it with the last point, is that at some level when we talk to investors, there is this over-romanticization of technology and products which get funded, but we don't get enough funding when we talk about ecosystems and structural innovations. And I think that's where the real answer lies. It's not in one app or one you know, technology product which will make a big change. Uh, what Gary described, yes, that could be, but not all of them could make those kind of a big change. We would like you to support us. Please come and uh, you know, understand from me how we do this if you would like more details. Thank you. Thank you. And during the break, uh, the coffee break, we will go around the innovation tables. I really would like to kind of move this panel to um, to impact. And, and so I, I encourage you, we're going to have strategy sessions, um, you know, next door, trying to get people together. How do we work together to, you know, really create the investment vehicles, partnerships that we need?